Welcome to a tutorial on quasi-linear equations. In this we are going to solve uh, some Cauchy problems for quasi-linear equations and we will also explain through examples the local nature of solutions to Cauchy problem. Recall that the existence and uniqueness theorem gave us existence of a solution only nearby any fixed point on the datum curve. So, is that all that can be expected or can we get a solution whose integral surface consists of the entire datum curve or defined on entire domain omega 2? These are the questions we are going to discuss under this heading on the local nature of solutions to Cauchy problem. So, let us start some uh, problems, examples. This is the simplest example that we considered in the beginning u x equal to 0 and uh, data is u 0 y equal to sin y. So, how do we solve this? We need to first parameterize the given Cauchy data x equal to 0, y equal to s, z equal to sin s and y in r therefore s in r. So, this is our datum curve. Then we need to look at the characteristic system of ODE for the given equation. Re recall dx by dt equal to a in this example a u x that is a is 1, b and c are 0. So, dy by dt equal to b which is 0, dz by dt equal to c which is 0. So, this is the characteristic system of ODE associated to this equation. Now, we need to solve these ODEs, system of ODEs. So, with initial condition so that at t equal to 0 we are at a point on gamma. So, x of 0 when time is 0 equal to 0, y of 0 is s, z of 0 equal to sin s because 0 comma s comma sin x is a arbitrary point on gamma, the datum curve. Solution is very simple to obtain. So, we get x equal to capital X of t s equal to t, y equal to capital Y of t s equal to s and z equal to capital Z of t s equal to sin s. That is very easy to see because see here dx by dt equal to 1 therefore x has to be t plus constant at t equal to 0 x must be 0 therefore this is x equal to t. Here dy by dt is 0 that means y is constant at t equal to 0 it must be s therefore y equal to s. dz by dt equal to 0 that means z is constant with respect to t but at t equal to 0 it should be sin s that will give us the solutions. Okay. Now we need to eliminate or we need to solve for t and s in terms of x and y from the first two equations which is obvious in this example t is capital T of x y equal to x, s equal to capital X of y capital S of x y equal to y. So, we have got this. Now, we need to substitute in this and we get the solution. So, u x y equal to sin y which is defined for all x y in R2. This is a picture that we have already seen the red is x axis, green is y axis and this is z axis and this uh, one which is in magenta color is the initial data u 0 y equal to sin y. So, 0 comma s comma sin s as s varies in r you get this curve and the integral surface is a blue color one these are the characteristic curves here they are straight lines we already saw that. Let us look at uh, another example this is also linear equation u x plus u y plus u equal to 1 and the Cauchy data is of this nature it is prescribed on some curve u of x comma x plus x square equal to sin x. So, as before you need to parameterize the Cauchy data. So, s x equal to s y equal to s plus s square and z equal to sin s and for s positive done and we need to write characteristic system of ODE dx by dt equal to a in this example a is 1, dy by dt is b, b is 1, dz by dt is c remember c is anybody who is on the other side. So, it will be 1 minus z you have to be careful there do not think it is 1, it is 1 minus z because equation is of the form a u x plus b u y equal to c. So, dz by dt equal to c therefore, it is 1 minus z. Now, we need to solve the system of characteristic ODE with the initial conditions which are given here and we get solutions as this x is t plus s y is t plus s plus s square z equal to 1 minus e power minus t plus e power minus t into sin s fine. Now, we need to find the t and s as functions of x and y using the first two equations x equal to t plus s and y is equal to t plus s plus s square. Uh, it is not clear to me how to get it 
but let us ask whether it is possible to get at all. So therefore, uh, yeah here it looks like it is possible to get. So t plus s is actually x therefore x s square is equal to y minus x therefore s equal to root y minus x okay, because s is positive that is why I am not taking minus so root y minus x. So once you know s t can be obtained from here x minus s that is why x minus root y minus x yeah so it is possible to get. And then substitute for t and s in this formula for z you will get a solution it is a solution. And now question is we have got the formula ask what is the domain on which it is defined. First of all you need that y minus x should be positive because it is square root that is it everything else is fine. So y minus x is positive that is the restriction which is y is bigger than x. So that means it defines a solution in this domain uh, x y in R2 such that y is bigger than x. So this is the integral surface it is in blue datum curve is in green. Uh, so, along this line y equal to x the formula has a problem right. Uh, so, the, you will see that corresponding trouble here uh, when y equal to x on the line y equal to x. Okay, let us look at another example. In this example what is happening is uh, ux plus 3y power 2 by 3 uy equal to 2. Now, a is 1 b is 3y power 2 by 3 this is not a c1 function our theorem required c1 function right it is not c1 function let us see what happens c of course is 2 constant no problem cauchy data is u of x1 equal to 1 plus x. So first thing as always is to write gamma in the parametric form which is this and characteristic system of ODE is this now we need to solve this system of ODE with initial conditions this solution is this x equal to t plus s y equal to t plus 1 whole cube z equal to 2t plus s plus 1. Now from the first two equations we get t equal to y power 1 by 3 minus 1 and s equal to x plus 1 minus y power 1 by 3. Okay. In fact for t you use this equation because it does not have s. Yes. So from here we get t once you get t substitute here you get for s that is why we got this. Now go back and substitute in this formula x plus y power 1 by 3 and uh, where is it defined? It is defined everywhere but then uh, everywhere in R2 because this is just cube root of y right cube root of any real number makes sense. But the problem here is that uh, it is not differentiable at y equal to 0. So we have to choose either y positive or y negative we have chosen y positive and these are the views uh, of the integral surface with the different orientations. Remember always the axis red is x, green is y and the blue is z axis. So you see that some steeping is happening here around y equal to 0 it should happen right because y power 1 by 3 is there it is not differentiable so something uh, it should be reflected in the picture. Okay. Let us look at another example this is a very non-standard example. Uh, this was constructed in with something else in mind and but uh, it turned out to be it is a very good example. Uh, it is an quasi linear equation so far we have considered only linear equation but this is a quasi linear equation sin u ux plus uy equal to 0. Here a and b a is sin u if a is 0 b should be non 0 but b is always 1 so it is uh, a square plus b square is non 0 fine. Cauchy data given is a, u of 0 y equal to y for all y in R let us solve. parameterize the Cauchy data 0 s s s in R characteristic system of ODE is this. Now because of the quasi linear nature equation for x actually involves z now whereas y and z uh, it does not involve any other variables. So from here you can see that uh, along a characteristic curve z is constant because dz by d is 0 and what is uh, d by dt equal to 1 means y equal to t plus constant therefore because at t equal to 0 should be s y is t plus s z is constant and that constant has to be s yes. therefore you put that s here and integrate this. So we get uh, sin s into t and at t equal to 0 it should be 0 so this is a solution y is t plus s z is s. 
Now using x and y equations we have to get an expression for t and s. But you see I do not think it is possible because t sin s is there, this is t plus s. So this is okay, nice t plus s, but there is a sign here. So <coughs> we cannot express, I cannot express uh, explicitly. Then I ask is it possible for anybody to express at all, which means uh, is the inverse function theorem applicable, we will check that. This was not the case so far, in all the earlier cases we could solve, maybe it is a bad function of x and y, it does not matter, but we could explicitly solve, here explicitly we are not able to solve, fine. So to know if a solution exists, we have to rely on the existence uniqueness theorem now, we have no choice. So in this example we are not going to get explicit form of the solution, because we are unable to invert, we are unable to write t and s as functions of x, y. So when you look at the whether it is possible at all, the J0s turns out to be sin s. Of course, sin s is 0 when s, whenever s is a multiple of pi, okay, all integral multiples of pi. Other than that, it is always non-zero. So if s is equal to k pi for some k integer, this Jacobian is 0. If it is not like k pi for some k, then it is always non-zero. These are all isolated points. Okay, So Jacobian if you remember we have pointed out the ways of uh, failure of, tra of uh, transversality condition and there we said it is a possibility that you have a sequence Sn along which J is 0 okay, but here and converging to some point, here it is not happening, these are all isolated points. Okay, There is no convergent subsequence of these multiples of pi. Okay. Otherwise, uh, Jacobian is non-zero. Therefore, local existence and uniqueness theorem is applicable whenever S is not a multiple of pi. So, in terms of y not, it is y not is not an inter integral multiple of pi. And we conclude that there exists an integral surface for the given PDE containing P not and a piece of gamma. Of course, question remains: What happens when S is an integral multiple of pi? that is to be explored. So now let us look at uh, some examples which uh, illustrate the local nature of solutions to the Cauchy problem. Before that let us, let us revise the notion of local solution. In uh, initial value problems for ODEs, this is the equation we consider dy by dx equal to fxy and yx not equal to y not. This is initial condition. So both equation and initial condition together is called initial value problem called IVP in short. Of course, we need to assume something on f. Let us assume that f is a continuous function. Now a solution to the IVP which is defined on the interval i is called global solution. What is i? i is here. This ODE makes sense for x in i. And if you have a solution which is defined for every x in i, we call it global solution. Imagine it is not the case and solution is defined only on a subinterval of i, the proper subinterval of i, then that is called local solution. Now recall that Peano's theorem and Cauchy Lipschitz Picard theorem, whenever it is applicable, always guarantee the existence of a local solution to IVP. Okay, they do not talk about global existence. There are other theorems about global existence. And there is a full understanding of what happens uh, if a local solution can be extended to make it a global solution. If you fail somewhere, what are the precise reasons why you cannot extend it to a global solution? So that is very much understood for initial value problems for ODEs, but that is not the case in my opinion for partial differential equations. I have not come across such results. Okay, let us now define for partial differential equations. A solution to a Cauchy problem for a quasilinear equation, it can be for any equation, uh, first order PDE. Because we are in this first order PDE setup and this is a tutorial on quasilinear equations, we can as well assume for quasilinear equations. Otherwise, concepts are quite general. So, a solution to a Cauchy problem is said to be a global solution if uh, this is where something comes with respect to datum curve if the corresponding integral surface contains the entire datum curve. Okay. You have a solution right, then look at the integral surface z equal to xy, entire gamma if it is on that, we say it is a global solution with respect to datum curve. Otherwise, the solution is called local solution with respect to datum curve. 
we have another related notion. A solution to a Cauchy problem is said to be a global solution with respect to domain, with respect to domain. If the solution is defined on the domain omega 2, what is omega 2? Omega 3 is a set on which uh, the quasi linear equation was defined right the coefficients a b c they are defined on omega 3. Projection of omega 3 to x y plane is omega 2. So, you would expect that solution should be defined throughout omega 2. If it is so we are happy and we will call it global solution with respect to domain. Otherwise solution is called local solution with respect to domain. Recall the existence and uniqueness theorem proved in lectures 2.6 and 2.7 they guarantee the theorem guarantees the existence of a local solution with respect to datum curve and with respect to domain both. Now, since gamma 2 is a subset of omega 2, okay, if a solution to the Cauchy problem is global with respect to domain that means it is defined throughout omega 2, it is also defined throughout gamma 2, gamma 2 is a projection of uh, gamma. So, it should be global with respect to datum curve. Observe that if a solution to the Cauchy problem is local with respect to datum curve, then it is also local with respect to domain. Okay, now, it's, this is a remark applicable for semilinear equations. Recall that the base characteristic curves are defined as projection to omega 2 of the characteristic curves in omega 3 in the context of general quasi linear equations. But in a semilinear equation, what happens is that base characteristic curves can be found out independent of the characteristic curves because the equations governing the base characteristic curves namely dx by dt equal to a and dy by dt equal to b involve only x and y a and b are functions of x y only it does not depend on z. Therefore, base characteristics can be found independent of characteristic curves. Now, we observed in step 2 namely in the proof of the existence uniqueness theorem there we observed that the equation for z may not admit solutions for all t for which base characteristics are defined simply because the dz by dt is a nonlinear equation for a general semilinear equation dz by dt is a nonlinear equation and uh, solutions to nonlinear equations as we said uh, as a rule are only local solutions. So, it can even cut out some portion of this base characteristic curves. So, this might result in a situation where projection of a characteristic curve may not be the entire base characteristic curve that you already found otherwise. Let us assume all these curves are the longest possible things that we have found. We will see an example it will be obvious. So, the next example exhibits this possibility ux plus ui equal to u square and Cauchy data is ux 0 equal to x. I think this is the simplest complicated semilinear equation because u square is the first equation that we learn even in ODE dy by dx equal to y square that is the first nonlinear equation that we will come across in first order ODEs. So, let us parameterize the given Cauchy data x equal to s, y equal to 0, z equal to s, s in R. The characteristic system of ODE is dx by dt equal to 1, dy by dt equal to 1, dz by dt equal to z square. Now, when we compute the base characteristics x equal to x of t s equal to t plus s because it is t plus constant it has to be t plus s y is just to t. Of course, z also can be integrated we get 1 by s minus t. From the first two equations we can solve uh, for uh, t and s in terms of x and y because these are just linear equations very easy to solve and u equal to this 1 by x minus 2 y it is defined on the domain whenever x minus 2 y is non zero. So, you have to stick to one of them uh, because I do not want in my domain x equal to 2 y happening. So, x is greater than 2 y is one option x is less than 2 y is another option, but when x is greater than 2 y I take x positive or x is less than 2 y I take x negative why is that because only this domain is in contact with the datum curve on which uh, datum curve a uh, projection of the datum curve is intersecting only this part or this part it is not inter intersecting uniformly x bigger than 2 y. Okay. Now, both solutions are local with respect to datum curve solutions. So, local solution with respect to datum curve observe that base characteristics are the family of straight lines x equal to y plus s. 
see here y equal to t right. So, y plus s x minus y equal to s that is a family of base characteristics and they fill a entire plane. Still Cauchy problem does not have a global with respect to domain forget about it even with respect to datum curve it does not have a global solution. So, this is a manifestation of the nonlinearity in the right hand side namely u square in the PDE. Let us look at example 6. Here we consider two Cauchy problems for the linear PDE, linear PDE minus y u x plus x u y equal to 0. Posed of course, I do not want uh, coefficients x and y to vanish simultaneously which happens at the origin. So, I remove the origin on that domain I consider this equation and the characteristic system of ODE we can directly write down right and base characteristics because of this nature dx by dt is minus y and dy by dt is x. So, if you compute one more derivative d 2 x by dt square is minus dy by dt that is equal to minus x. Therefore, d 2 x by dt square plus x equal to 0. Similarly, one can do with y. So, solutions of x and y are going to be uh, solutions of uh, y double dash plus y equal to 0 which are combination of cosine and sine and the trajectories will be circles. So, base characteristics are the family of circles x square plus y square equal to c square. Since it is positive number we write c square because we do not want to write root c in some other place. So, we write c square and always make sure make mention this that c is positive. So, that we do not get confused later. Now, the equation for z implies that any solution to the PDE is constant along each of the base characteristics because z is con constant right dz by dt is 0 on solutions of this. Okay. So, that means uh, on each circle the solution is constant. So, if you know at one point on the circle what is the value of the solution then it is the same constant throughout that circle on that circle. Okay. Cauchy data 1 we consider x equal to s, y equal to 0, z equal to s and s r minus 0. Okay. This is not that we are what we like, but it is ok. We continue with this the computation. Gamma is not a curve obviously, it is a two pieces, okay. but never mind I just for now. Uh, I guess one can uh, create similar conditions, but then they look more complicated than this. This is very easy for computation. So, let me allow me this. So, I am going to compute with this. So, this is the initial conditions and then solutions as I said cos t sin t the feature and z is s. Now, from the first two equations for positive s I can eliminate uh, or I can express I think I should not use the word eliminate I can express s and t in terms of x and y I get this and for s negative I get this expression for s that is why negative for s negative positive for s positive t remains same. So, in both the cases the function s and t are not defined at points where x is 0 because when x is 0 there is a trouble it is not defined. So, since z equal to s the solution is given by u x y equal to s x y therefore, u x y equal to this if x is negative x positive. Now, it is defined on r 2 minus x axis and all points of gamma lie on the corresponding integral surface. So, this is global with respect to datum curve not global with respect to domain because it is not defined everywhere on r 2 minus 0 0 no it is defined r 2 minus x axis. Now, another function v defined on entire domain r 2 minus 0 0 given by this formula it is also PDE, but the problem is it is not a solution to the Cauchy problem. Why? For x in r minus 0 v x 0 is root x square that is mod x on one hand, but v x 0 has to be x on the other hand because that is the initial condition. So, uh, both cannot happen particularly for x negative it is not possible. So, it is not a solution to the Cauchy problem uh, throughout. Yes, if you restrict for x positive side then yes. Okay. Cauchy data 2 here uh, we look at uh, x equal to s, y equal to 0, z equal to h s. So, it is like uh, correction for the previous thing. Here mod x is an even function 
and here given data is not even function that is why there is a problem. So, now I am going to change it to even function H s where H is an even function still the same problem, but again adjust uh, same procedure as above we get u x y equal to a function h of root x square plus y square. This is defined whenever x y is different from origin and a smooth function. If h is differentiable uh, c 1 function then this is being a composition of c 1 functions it will be c 1 function and it will be a solution. See so now u x 0 is h of mod x and that is equal to h x because it is an even function. Thus Cauchy problem has a solution defined on R2 uh, minus origin. So, it has a global with respect to domain solution therefore, global with respect to data as well. Solution is global with respect to both. So, let us summarize many Cauchy problems are solved using method of characteristics understood the local nature of solutions to first order PDEs this we understood local nature can be in the same two different senses one is with respect to the datum curve another is with respect to the domain of course through two examples we have understood and reasons were different in each of these examples and in a forthcoming lecture an example of a Cauchy problem for Burgess equation will be studied. In that example the local nature of a solution arises due to intersecting base characteristics that we will see in a forthcoming lecture. So, with this we come to the end of uh, quasi linear equations and uh, we will then start with a general nonlinear equation once again Cauchy problem. We will be making a regular comparison to what we did in the Cauchy problem for quasi linear equations. You may say that quasi linear equation is a special case of a general equation why do two times right why repetition that why do not you do the general thing first no because quasi linear equation always when you do not understand something you would like to understand with a special case quasi linear is one such special case where things are easily understood. Now we try to extend these ideas to the general case that is what is the natural progression in solving problems in mathematics. Thank you.